Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everyone. Again, uh, we are today in the Ada Academy showing you uh, an interesting case. This lovely ball in the anterior chamber, as you see, this patient is 24 years old lady, came to my clinic with sudden drop of vision with ocular pain and headache. On examination, I found this lovely ball. Uh, it seems at the first look as a, 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 a silicone bubble escaped from the posterior segment of the anterior chamber behind in, in front of the narrow pupil. But actually on uh, the on completion of the examination, I found that there is no lens and there is no history of operations in this eye. So the diagnosis will be in the way of a syndrome. So this, the patient's face told me about uh, some congenital anomalies, the sunken eyes, the long tip nose, the thin long fingers. So the diagnosis uh, went in the, in the way of Marchesani wheel or real Marchesani syndrome and Marfan, but on the wheel or real Marchesani more than the Marfan syndrome. Um, Finally, what, I, what I, 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 I can do for such case, if you have it in your clinic, the sudden elevation of the intraocular pressure, which was 42 millimeter mercury, uh, the vision was down to 160 very hardly. The refraction on the autofractometer was minus 24. And this refraction was fake, so I cannot consider it at all. Then I thought to decrease the interocular pressure by acetamex tablets in the clinic and ask this patient for uh, to lie on her back on, on a bed on the side room in my clinic. And I, uh, I, I give her a pupillodilator to help, um, to help the lens to go back to its original place or normal place in the posterior chamber. Um, so it happened within 30 minutes and the interocular pressure became less, became 28 after 30 minutes, after just three zero minutes. Uh, and the vision improved, for, uh, improved from 160 to 660 um, in a very, very short time. So I discharged this patient on medications for reduction of the interocular pressure and asked her to lay down for a long time, for most of her time, to be on her back until I prepared her for a surgery. So I went, she came to me after three days to decide the surgery after preparation with this treatment to avoid any uh, surprising complications intraoperatively. So the pupil was plucked the pupil was very narrow and the lens behind the pupil. And um, uh, uh, really it became, uh, she became uh, much bitter and she asked me to postpone the surgery, but I asked her not to think this way because to avoid any, to avoid any other uh, complications or emergencies from this eye. Uh, on dilatation and uh, examination of the lens on the posterior segment, posterior segments were normal in both eyes. And the lens was, showed microspherophicia, microspherophicia. But uh, it, it, it was anteriorly dislocated in the right eye, but in its side in the left eye. So I went for this surgery. As you see, the, the pupil is dilated and the lens in its place, actually, because the, the patient on her back on the, on the operative uh, chair. But I'm going to extract this, this pole, which appeared like this, this sun in the sunset behind this horizon, in front of this horizon. So I'm going now to to tr try to keep the lens, the, the lens bag, but it was impossible to do it. So I'm going to open the capsule to avoid 
a lot of manipulation because the zonules were almost none. Yeah, I can count the zonules. The anti-zonules was, was about seven or eight of the round. So as you see now, the lens is moving and going and flowing with me with all manipulation. Again, tapping the, the vitreous with the, with the viscoelastic and I'm going now to do lensectomy using the ketone. The most important thing here to, to, to take in your consideration to avoid dropping of this lens. Really, it was a very hard moment because I, I, I was worried all the time uh, for this lens or the lens particles to go posteriorly. I did like to go past plana to keep it closed, but I'm trying to do it thoroughly. I was keen all the time to put the ocutum below the lens to avoid its escape. So most of it was taken or eaten with the micro, the, the ocutum and, and this is the last piece. So I'm carefully dealing with most of it now. Yeah, it's clear now. There is no bag, there is no lens, it's open sky. So I, I took my decision to implant the intraocular lens in the same uh, session. I was thinking in the Agravals technique, externalized haptics or Yamani, but I preferred in this case to, to put a iris fixated by a three piece IL. Using the, uh, the fourth row one bass a proline suture. Yeah, I'm trying to constrict the people mechanically. I injected the pilocarpine intracamillary, but it didn't it didn't work. So I'm trying to complete its action with or enhance its action with the uh, pulling the the, the pupil all around. Then I'm injecting now the three piece foldable IL in the anterior chamber. Be careful. Be sure that the haptic, the leading haptic in the anterior chamber, otherwise it will go posteriorly. So I will keep the haptic both haptics, uh, both haptics and optic in the anterior chamber. Then I will, I will insert the one, the first haptic down, just below the iris. To make the first fixating point. But keep the optic above the iris all the time until you get fix you get fixated haptics. Yes, the optic and the anterior chamber in front of the pupil and the first haptic is done. So I will push the, the haptic with an, an instrument. to know its shadow and its way. Yeah, this is the first suture passing through. Yeah, I will, I will uh, push the optic up to know the site of haptic, then pass the needle just below it. Be careful not to injure the endothelium. 
all the hours. Now, we will get the free end on the exit side while the entry side, the entry side, I will get the needle. I will, uh, sorry, I will grasp the suture to make a circle. This is the one pass. Yeah, you want to show it as a complete step. Yes, this is the one. This is the one, yeah. This is the circle where I will pass through it for four times. One, two, three, four. And to be sure, you can add more to be five times. Yeah, so both sides stretch it together to form a good and strong knot, then cut the free ends. This will be done, uh, you, will do, you will do the same for the other haptic. It, it's, it's quite difficult then, first one, yes, because it, it's, it's free one, it's not supported like the first. So it's down now. I would be I, I I would be careful not not to slip the first fixating point. Yes. yes. Now the optic is was brought again in the anterior chamber in front of the pupil, and I'm going to throw the shadow just below the the other haptic. And the same done for the four throws through this one bus. Now both haptics are supported and fixated by this proline suture to the back of iris. Now the optic is, is dialed and pushed back to be behind the pupil and to be supported. And to be un un tried to make the people rounded but it was somewhat uh, it was somewhat oval because of the straightening haptics but after that it will be much better it's a good choice in such cases to do it but really the microsphere figure is a very difficult case because the lens is very is very uh, rounded small uh, and the zonules are very weak, so you, you may lose it very easily and uh, getting troubles with a posterior dislocation of the lens. Thank you for watching. I hope it uh, enjoyable and beneficial video and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.